Hey guys, today we are going to answer the question, how do I find the slope from real world situations? So I started by putting the slope formula over here because we will still use that a lot to find the slope from real world situations. Remember, slope is also called the rate of change. When finding slope in a real world situation, you want to think about how much the problem is changing by. And then like I talked about a little bit, you can still use the slope formula and we can also use rise over run if there's a graph to find the slope from real world situations. If we're given a lot of information, it can be helpful to think about what the independent and dependent X and Y variables represent as well as make a table. And then a lot of the times when we make a table, we're able to use the slope formula. Let's look at this first one. It says, Kenzie has a small blow up pool that has a slow leak. The table shows the linear relationship between the total inches of water in the pool and time in hours. Calculate the rate of change of the water that is leaking per hour. So it says rate of change. That's how I know I'm going to find slope. And they gave us a table, so we're gonna use slope formula. So first thing I want to do is label my x1, y1, x2, and y2. Hours would be the independent x because that number of hours determines the dependent variable water in pool. So x is the number of hours and y is the amount of water in the pool. So now I know what x and y are, so I can choose two points to label x1, y1, x2, and y2. I'm just gonna use the first two. And now I will plug into slope formula to find the slope. We will do y2, so 18.25, minus y1, so 24.25, all over x2, so 7, minus x1, 3. Now I just need to simplify 18.25 minus 24.25 is negative 6. And seven minus three is four. And then we are talking about the inches that are draining in the pool per hour. So I'm gonna change this to a decimal. So the pool is draining 1.5 inches per hour. All right, let's look at number two. It says, Kylie is making chocolate chip cookies. The table shows the linear relationship between amount of chocolate chips needed and the number of cookies that are made. Calculate the rate of change of chocolate chips per cookie. So the independent here would be the number of cookies because the number of chips that they need will depend on the number of cookies that they make. So there's our X and Y variable. And then I can choose any two points to plug into slope formula since it says find the rate of change. So I labeled my x1, y1, x2, and y2, and now I'm gonna plug into slope formula. It is y2 minus y1, so 288 minus 144, all over x2 minus x1, so 24 minus 12. So 288 minus 144 is 144, and then 24 minus 12 is 12. And 144 divided by 12 is 12. So that means that Kylie used 12 chips per cookie. All right, let's look at three. It says the graph below shows the growth in inches of Adair's tree based on the number of months since it was planted in her yard. What is the rate of change and what does it represent? So here's a graph showing as the months go on, her tree is growing in inches. So let's try to figure out how many inches her tree is growing. As for the rate of change, which is slope, so I'm gonna find two perfect points and let's draw a slope triangle. My y-axis is counting by sixes. So I'm only going up one space, but that change from 24 to 18 is six. So the rise is six. And then the run is one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a decimal since we're talking about 
inches. So six over four is 1.5. So it said, what is the rate of change and what does it mean? So 1.5 means that she is, her tree is growing 1.5 inches per month. So a dare's tree is growing 1.5 inches per month. All right, let's look at number four. It says the graph below shows the number of ounces of watermelon sherbet in a bowl based on the number of minutes that Maya has been eating sherbet. What is the rate of change and what does it represent? So again, we're finding the rate of change, so that means we're finding the slope. First thing I notice is this line is negative, which makes sense because she's eating the ice cream, so there's going or the sherbet, so there's going to be less and less of it. All right, now let's find the rate of change by finding two perfect points and drawing a slope triangle. The y-axis is counting by twos, so when I count the rise, I'm going to count by twos. So two, four, the rise is four. And then the run is counting by ones. So the run is one, two, three. So the slope is negative four thirds. So what does that represent? That means that she is eating four ounces every three minutes. All right, number five says Mark's hair is growing at a linear rate. The first week of eighth grade, it was two inches long. The fifth week of eighth grade, his hair was 2.8 inches long. Assuming Mark has not gotten any haircuts, what is the rate that his hair is growing in inches per week? So I'm going to make a table here, but first I should figure out what I want X and Y to represent. So we're talking about his hair growing at a constant rate, and it looks like they are counting by weeks. So I'm going to let X be the number of weeks, and then Y will be the length of his hair. Okay, now I can make a table with the information that I was given. So it says the first week of eighth grade, his hair was two inches long. And then the fifth week of eighth grade, it was 2.8 inches long. And then it says, what is the rate that his hair was growing in inches per week? So now I have two ordered pairs and I can label them X1, Y1, X2, Y2 and plug into slope formula. So it'll be 2.8 minus 2 all over 5 minus 1. 2.8 minus 2 is 0.8 and 5 minus 1 is 4. Now I just need to simplify that. 0.8 divided by 4 is 0 0.2. So his hair was growing at a rate of 0 0.2 inches per week. All right, last one. On February 11th, 2021, a historic winter storm hit Texas. At 12 p.m., Cedar Park, Texas had a temperature of 53 degrees. The temperature dropped at a linear rate. By 5 p.m., the temperature was 28 degrees. What is the rate of change of degrees per hour that the temperature dropped? So let's start by figuring out what we want X and Y to represent. So we are talking about the temperature changing and it changes over a period of hours from 12 to 5. So X will be the number of hours. 
and then y will be the temperature. All right, so let's set up our table here. So at 12 o'clock, the temperature was 53 degrees. I am not going to start with 12 in my table though. I'm not gonna put 12 for X because remember X is the number of hours. We are starting at 12. It's not that 12 hours have passed, that's when we are starting to count the temperature. So I'm gonna make that point zero. And then the temperature was 53 degrees then. And then five hours later at 5 p.m., the temperature was 28 degrees. So there's my table. When we started this at zero hours, it was 53 degrees. And then five hours later, it was at 28 degrees. And now I can plug in to slope formula to find the rate of change. So it'll be 28 minus 53 all over five minus zero. So 28 minus 53 is negative 25. And then five minus zero is five. So the slope is negative five. So that means that the temperature was dropping negative five degrees Fahrenheit per hour.